a truth he would learn more of soon. As he walked past broken fish-drying racks and noticed the house he knew to be Mars, his desire to go north was pushed down by his curiosity. He felt drawn to it. As he touched the door, a vision came to his mind. He saw a pathway beyond the house and a triangular stone. Dwemhar, warrior, come to us, come to us now. The voice was frantic but direct. He looked around the edge of the house and followed the path as if his vision was literally just what he was about to do. As he crested over the top of a small hill, he came to a rocky outcropping and a small stream running toward the sea. He glanced around, kicking aside blue flowers growing over the many large rocks, and eventually saw the triangular stone he was looking for. As he touched the stone, the ground transformed to that of a glowing prism, and in a flash, he was in darkness. Before he could even attempt to move forward, a single flame appeared. Kaelin of the North, the voice said. Yes. The voice wasn't female, so he was not sure who he was speaking to. You do not remember me, friend, I am sure, but you helped me once, you and two other men. As the flame moved to the right, suddenly a torch was lit and the narrow passageway they were standing in became alight. Keelan saw the man who spoke. It was Erna, Mars' brother, and the captain of the dismal reign of the Highland Navy. Much has changed in the world, he said with a careful embrace to Keelan. Keelan pushed his hand from him. I feel a bit tricked. I am heading north. Frankly, I didn't need to hide in here. I thought Ma needed something, a moment of weakness on my own account. Ma is well, 